Council President Lazarus. Present. Councilwoman Anthony. Present. Councilwoman Castillo. Present. Councilman Correa. Present. Councilman Espinata. Present. Councilwoman Harris. Present. Councilman Iguodosi. Present. Present. Councilwoman Perwin. Here. Councilwoman LaFortune. Present. Councilwoman Miller. Present. Councilman Narducci. Here. Councilwoman Ryan. Present. Councilman Salvatore. Is absent. Councilman Taylor. Is absent. Councilman Yuri. Present. Do you have 13 present? Do you have a quorum? Oh, 
appointment is going to be coming up soon. Congratulations. Mr. Clerk. Discharge from committee, item 6. Committee Did I right? Motion to move to discharge from committee and to pass item 6 on a roll call vote. Second. The motion second. has been made and second to discharge from committee to item number 6 and to pass the item on a roll call vote. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Mr. Clerk. Council President Monson. Aye. Council Lord. Councilman Castillo. Aye. Councilman Correa. Aye. Councilman Espinal. Aye. Councilwoman Harris. Aye. Councilman Agliosi. Aye. Councilwoman Kerwin. Aye. Councilwoman La Fortune. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Narducci. Aye. Councilwoman Ryan. Aye. Councilman Salvatore. Is absent. Councilman Taylor. Aye. Councilman Yurda. You have 14 ayes and one absent. The matter passes. Thank you. Um, Leader Ryan, is that a motion? Motion to take item, excuse me. Madam President, motion to take item 22 out of order. Second. So the motion has been made and second to take item number 22 out of order. An ordinance establishing a tax stabilization agreement for Westminster Partners, LLC, located on Assessor Flat 20, Lot 409, 203 Westminster Street. Is there a The motions have been made. A uh, motion has been made and second to take item number 22 out of order. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Yeah, I have it. Uh, Mr. Clerk, can you please read the item? Oh, he did, did it right. He did, Madam President, and I make a motion to pass item 22 for the first time on a roll call vote. Second. The motion has been made in second to pass item number 22 on a roll call vote for the first time. Um, Chairman Ignacy. Thank you, Madam President. Let me quickly for my council colleagues and just uh, the folks that have been following and the folks that have. Um, Concern this matter. This is a proposed tax stabilization. Very quickly, I, I just want to. I opened the windows recently, just a second ago, and why I did that is to give a little sense of history. Unfortunately, when I first started as council president, Mr. Council Mancini was there. One of the first things I voted on was actually the tax treaty for the Province Place Mall. So all the things you kind of see down here, the buildings, and they didn't exist. That tax tree, that 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 tax tree that we voted eight seven, eight in favor, seven against, started the ball rolling. From the IGT building to the Blue Cross building to everything you see, uh, from Blue Cross, none of that existed, and it was a very difficult vote. But there was pros and cons. Why you should, why you should. Why I talk about that is because if that vote did not go positive at that time, the very thing that all of us are living in now, which is you see a lot of positive built up there right now. It's a lot of cranes in the skies, a lot of development, and opportunity for our city and our neighborhoods and our citizens. This is another one. As you know, unfortunately, when we walk up City Hall on the council side, we've been walking up the building, by the way, for I don't know how many years. It's been, let's call it a beat up, boarded up, dilapidated. I mean, it hasn't been the, what you want to say, like, hey, this is the place to go. And you think about it for a second, when people come to City Hall, and look at this great city, and then right next to it is boarded up, beat up, actually architecturally pretty building, but nothing's happening. It sends a message. It's not a good message, it's not a positive message. So we have an opportunity tonight. No, it's not perfect. Nothing is perfect. An opportunity to do two things. Now, we can do this and do nothing. Now, people say, do nothing. We say, you know what? People say, the next 20 years we can collect, yeah, two million bucks. That's a good thing, right? Well, who doesn't want two million dollars for the city? Tonight, the council has an opportunity not just to collect two million dollars in the next 20 years, but 
close to $6 million in the next 20 years. The council also has an opportunity to collect zero, or instead collect almost $150,000 from our parks and recreational trust account. The city council this evening has an opportunity to collect zero for housing, <coughs> and collect close to $600,000 to our housing trust account. By the way, if you all remember back in July, we passed the city of order. It's a law that says tax dollars from TSAs, 10% of the money that we collect goes into the housing trust account. And I have to give the kudos to my council colleagues, and of course, by the way, Councilwoman Mary Kay Harris, one of the most passionate spokespeople of affordable housing, and she was driving it. As by the way, as well as Councilwoman uh, uh, Castillo, and Councilman Ponte, and all the councilmen around here, I gotta tell you something, it was, it was a big, it was a big uh, issue, and we came up with an answer, and I thought it was positive. So, that is what is in for us. Also, by the way, let's not forget this. Tonight, we can either go zero for any new full-time jobs in the city of Providence, or vote yes for 154 new full-time jobs, permanent jobs. Or tonight, we can vote zero for no new construction jobs, or vote yes for 233 new construction jobs. Now, like I said, TSA is not perfect, but there's a lot of positive to this proposed TSA. <laughs> I ask my council colleagues, I understand there's pros and cons, I ask you to think hard and long, and think, some of you were here, I know my council, former council president was, and some of you may have been here, the day when this place was barren and empty, and what you see today, we have an opportunity to take the progress the city has, so I ask all of you to support it, move forward, move smooth, yes, for millions of dollars of tax dollars, move. yes for housing money, yes for parks, yes for permanent um, jobs and construction jobs. And I think at the end, you'll all be happy because the very council members who voted no 20 plus years ago for the wall, I've seen them in the past, past 20 years, and they go, you know what, I should have voted for the wall. With that, I ask all of you to to support.
But I do want to remind everyone that there were many people here who voted for an ordinance change for the Fane Tower. Now, that is a developer who has not even purchased, hasn't even financed, financed, the, financed the parcel that we, in this chamber, not me and, many other, and some other council members, but the majority voted to change it. He would be receiving $30 million without even a TSA from the city in tax incentives for a $300 million development. Not only that, he just recently asked to give a $1,000 deposit on a $300 million development. That is an insult to our city. But you know what we did? The majority did? They voted to change the ordinance so he can build without even purchasing the land, mm -hmm. securing the financing to purchase the land. Now I agree, we do need to take um, change our taxation, our TSA structure. Council um, Anthony and I were away in San Antonio just recently and we went with other leaders, um, mayors, city council people to talk about these, this very issue. One of the things that came up was there are many municipalities that have a standard procedure for this type of stuff. So most of them have like a 15 year cap for any TSA. There are requirements that are outlined. We don't have a standardized process and we've been trying to push it, but it hasn't gone through. Now with this particular TSA, there is a guideline for it. We also approved in the budget to hire someone to actually monitor the TSAs to ensure that all of the things that are listed are delivered. There is an apprenticeship requirement. There is a WBE MBD. There is a first source requirement, which I've been an advocate to make sure that we're hiring from our city and people who are inputting their information in first source. However, that has been a problem. So with the person in place now, that should be enforced. There's also a reporting requirement. So what I hope that comes out of this is that we hold this developer accountable. What will happen to this company if we don't sell it? What will happen to this building if we don't sell it? You know what happens? The developer, because you purchased it, can write it off as a tax write-off. And we will not get any incentives. Councilman, um, Councilman Miller, you are one of the advocates, along with many, myself and other council members, in supporting affordable housing and creating the housing trust fund. There will be 10% of the um, income generated from the taxes that goes directly into the housing fund. Not we have, we, oh, you're absolutely right. When I put a motion through during the whole fake tower situation to ensure that a certain percentage of whatever um, units were developed in that, um, in, in, that, in that project was allocated for affordable housing, the majority of it we can't pick when we're going to vote for TSA or when we're going to vote to support a developer. We need to be consistent. At some point, if we do not generate enough revenue, commercial revenue, then you know who the burden's going to fall on? The residents. Us. Yeah. Our taxes are going to increase, and we're going to find ourselves in some real fiscal, we're going to face some real fiscal challenges. We're already there. Yeah. Yeah.
they're doing what they're supposed to do. So, I have issues with a 20 year TSA across the board. Oh, if, you want to change, if you want to change the structure, then we need to propose a new TSA model. But if, right. the, if the developer, if we have an ordinance in place, and the developer is following the steps and will abide to what is outlined in that ordinance, we can't just say, well, you know what? We're not going to give you this TSA because it's wrong. Do it the right way. Right. It is not right. So it's right. either we follow the processes that we have in place or we don't. But if we choose not to approve these TSA, then we can't approve any of the TSA. Good.
But let me tell you, workers, as you approach the floor, uh, demanded also at the time for that building to be built because it would satisfy workers. What I heard through that whole thing, and by the way, I've been on a picket line for most of you and all of you who have participated throughout my organizing period. I spent 30 years organizing and I continue to organize because I do believe in the working class. I do. So at this present, this, this subject, you. this subject right here is a subject that we have to come out and bring it on. And the agreement must be that we cannot compete against one thing or the other. What happened when I decided to go to the Fame Tower? It wasn't about zoning for me. It was about the noise that I heard in this room where I heard people calling for affordable housing, for people who I see every day in my neighborhood, who are displaced, I have no home. Mothers who call me up and say, what can I do? Because I have no place to go with my child. I'm sleeping on a friend's couch, but they ask me to leave. What you're supposed to do at that period of time? You're supposed to push in a position to make things change or to see the changes that have to happen around who gets what in of the spectrum. I came in here absolutely against TSAs, absolutely against it, especially I'm on record against the 20 year TSA. However, however, when it comes to the fact that we have to hold ourselves accountable, one of the things that were came out of the Fame Tower that I became so proud of, whether you know it or not, was the fact that this council, this leadership, took on the responsibility of making sure that people don't have to lay in the streets at night because they have no roof over their head, or living in shelters if they're being displaced and pushed out of, or fixing from people have no opportunity for real housing So I appreciate my colleagues for hearing how important that was and pass the law for the Housing Reserve Fund to take away 10% of these tax breaks to be put towards housing. That was not when the Bay Tower came here. There was no rule, there was no law, there was nothing to hold the rich and the wealthy accountable. We're working hard. Now today, I made the decision to vote for this.
what the issue might be, or to have a conversation with the taxation department to make sure that the TSA requirements are being, um, are, uh, they're abiding to whatever the requirements of the TSA um, may be. And so we voted on something. We voted on a budget to ensure that there's someone in place to support that. And as Councilman Harris said, again, we have an affordable housing crisis. This will allocate 10% from a hotel.
long haul goal to approve the IS 7 and 8. Council President Matos. Aye. Councilwoman Anthony. Aye. Councilwoman Castillo. Absent. Councilman Correa. Aye. Councilman Espinal. Aye. Councilwoman Harris. Aye. Councilman Igliosi. Aye. Councilwoman Kerwin. Aye. Councilwoman La Fortune. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Narducci. Aye. Councilwoman Ryan. Aye. Councilman Salvatore. Is absent. Councilman Taylor. Aye. Councilman Jordan. Aye. You have 13 ayes and you have two absent. Um, the matter is passed for the, sec for the first time on a roll call vote. Oh, sorry. Those matters actually passed for the second time on a roll call vote. Presentation of ordinances, item 9, Council President Matos and Council Correa. An ordinance and amendment of chapter 27. Either way, on concern with the second reading on these ordinances, my motion was to pass for the first time. On a roll call vote, do I need to retract that or to change my motion? Uh, I need a motion. Motion has been made a second to pass item 7 and 8 for the second time on a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk. Council President Matos. Aye. Councilman Anthony. Aye. Councilman Castillo is absent. Councilman Correa. Aye. Councilman Espinal. Aye. Councilman Harris. Aye. Councilman Igliosi. Aye. Councilman Perro. Aye. Councilman LaFortune. Aye. Councilman Miller. Aye. Councilman Narducci. Aye. Councilman Ryan. Aye. Councilman Salvador is absent. Councilman Taylor. Aye. Councilman Yurgen. Aye. You have 13 ayes and two absent. So the civil matters pass for the second time in the roll call vote. Presentation of ordinances. Item 9, Council President Matos and Councilman Correa. Madam President, in the right. Motion to waive the reading of item 9 and refer to the committee on ordinances. Thank you. Motion has been made a second to waive the meeting is item number nine and to refer to the committee on ordinance. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, stand up. Council President Matos, Councilman Correa, Councilman Kerwin, and Councilman Kerwin. Either way. Motion to waive the reading of item 10 and pass for the first time on a roll call vote. Second. Second. And to refer. To refer to the committee on finance. Second. Second. For the first time on a roll call vote. Second. The motion has been made a second, and it's going to be to pass item number 10 for the first time on a roll call vote, and it's going to be referred to the Committee on Finance. Mr. Clerk? Council President Matos. Aye. Councilwoman Anthony. Aye. Councilwoman Castillo. Is passed. Councilman Correa. Aye. Councilman Vizpinal. Aye. Councilwoman Harris. Aye. Councilman Iglesias. Aye. Councilwoman Grover. Aye. Councilwoman Fortune. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Narducci. Aye. Councilwoman Ryan. Aye. Councilman Salvatore. Absent. Councilman Taylor. Aye. Councilman Yurden. You have 12 ayes, one nay, and two absent. The matter passes for the first time on roll call vote. And is referred to the committee on finance. Item 11. Council President Matos. Either way, motion to waive the readings of items 11 through 13 and refer to the Committee on Public Safety. Second. Motion has been made a second to waive the readings of item number 11 through 13 and refer the matter to the Committee on Public Safety. And Council Manate? Yes, I'd just like to address number 12 that I have ordered to be
Any other comments? Motion to be in sync. All those in favor? Aye. Yeah, Aye. Item 14. Council of Women of Fortune. Council President Matos. Council Council. Either Aye. Motion to waive the reading of item 14 and refer to the committee on ordinances. Second. Motion to be in sync. Presentation of 
resolutions in memoriam. Item 30, Council President Matos and members of the City Council, resolution extending sympathy. Madam President, motion to pass item 30 on a unanimous rising vote. Second. The motion has been a second to pass item number 30 on a unanimous rising vote. All those in favor? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. 